We're here trick or treating. Got all these kids. Olivia's handing out the candy. Got all the cars down here in the infield. Still got some shirts left in various sizes. Here's the front, here's the back. Best part about it, this is not a heavy, heavy ink pad, so you're not gonna be sweating your butt off. It's pretty light, really comfortable. All right, guys, welcome back to Tracing Racing. I'm back um, from my trip. Me and Livia took our honeymoon the last couple weeks and uh, had a good time on the East Coast, but it's race day. It's super truck race number four out of four for the year uh, for us um and uh yeah i got a couple couple days to get some work done on the car after i got back from the trip i got the car on the hammond plates um didn't really know what i was looking at so i called dave hammond and uh didn't get a call back so i was kind of shooting from the hip here um you can see i got a little plot here i was kind of mapping out the front end and getting it all square to the car i found that the right side wheelbase was an inch and a half longer than the left side which I don't know because I couldn't talk to him, but I think that's a lot. So I shortened that up a little bit. Um, I'm just hoping I didn't crutch the car too bad because it's been as fast as it's been ever this year. We got a first, a second, and a third, um, and it's just been lightning fast. I'm still about three tenths off of the fastest guys um, on any given night, but it's making a lot of progress over the last couple of years, and especially this year. So I'm hoping I didn't hurt the car, but I think uh, what I did on shortening up the right side wheelbase is going to help us out more than hurt us. Um, but got some pretty fresh rubber on the back that I heavily, heavily, heavily grooved because I'm thinking that it's going to be a pretty wet night, you know, being late October. Um, it's not too hot today, so it's kind of been wet all year. So I'm just kind of going with the pattern, how it's been going. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if there's bad today broken. Let's go ahead and race. All right, guys. Made it. Just went out for hot laps. Uh, this is our fourth race at Antioch Speedway tonight out of four races and uh, So far if you count the points on my race pass, I'm the leader. I don't know if they're doing a championship this year or not But I'm gonna try to win it Just for myself, you know, I don't care if I get a trophy or not even though it's four races at Antioch Speedway um, I've never won a championship before so it'd be something that I can say I did one day I guess you know looking back on it, but Car's ready to go, gonna go out for hot laps. Livia is a... Cat, a mouse, a dog, whatever. A bear. <laughs> and dad is a... Dad. Captain Morgan or something. Dad. Right? Dad. That's right. So you wanna show them your decorations? Yes. They got First, tr trick or treating for the kids tonight. Cute. There. And then, show them. you ready?
the lights. Look how cute. Okay. <laughs> don't look at the you one. Got a couple folds. Don't look at the one that's out. You got two out. One right in the middle and one over there on the left hand side. It's okay. If you squint, it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, the car is too tight. I put the car in the handling plates and I try to do some stuff. I'm gonna reverse it. <laughs> okay. Look at the beautiful sunset. Well, apparently 
recently I found this out in the, in the hobby stock. There's a slick spot in turn four. Oh. But I don't think anybody was hit. trick-or-treating got all these kids Olivia's handing out the candy got all the cars down here in the infield some kids only have costumes they want candy I don't get it oh got a skeleton here little fireman having a good time Okay, I have to show my lights again. <laughs> the kids have been fed all the candy in the world. Yes. Now they're gonna have. There's only like five pieces left. <laughs> they're gonna have cavities. <laughs> yeah, that was cute. It was fun. Okay, so what are your plans? What are you planning on doing? So the plan is we uh, we dropped the J bar down a little bit and help us out a little bit of side bite. Um, I let out the leopard chain a little bit too. Hopefully give us some more leopard dry because I think the track's getting pretty dry. They're putting water on it, but I think it's just going to blow off real quick. Um, and we're putting our dry set of tires on the rear. So we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, this is the part of the night where it takes a sharp turn, kind of for the worst. Uh, we were th third main event up, and they had just watered the track after the uh, trick-or-treating thing on the infield. Well, I've known from experience this year at Antioch Speedway, when they water the track, it doesn't stick. It's normally a hard-packed track, so when they watered it, um, I was thinking that it was going to blow off in about a main event or two, and we were third in line. Well, apparently they watered it so much that the first main event's on the track as I'm pulling off here, and they took the green, and it was so slimy and greasy that all the mini stocks watered up in the first turn. So apparently the chief steward called that race off and brought out the next main event, and I'm sitting in staging, and I'm hearing the hardtops go around and around and around on the track, trying to run it in at their speed or whatever speed they can make on that track, and they probably did like at least 20 laps. And uh, I hear the chief start come on the radio again and say, hey, you guys go back to the pits, refuel your cars. We're going to bring the super stocks out and have them finish off the track. And we go out there. We probably do another like 20 laps running in the track. And it is slimy, greasy, big time. And then he finally comes on the radio and says, okay, you guys double up. And I'm like, this is the slimiest track I've ever taken a green flag on for a main event. So this is going to get crazy because I'm starting on the front row. Uh, so you guys be prepared, dry tires, dry setup, and a heavy foot, be prepared for a lot of chip here.
Talk to the champion, Ryan Serezian. Come on out here, champ. Right over here. Ryan Serezian, well, we talked during intermission and uh, he said the car's for sale. I think the price just went up. <laughs> no, the price is still the same. Make me an offer. I'm just going to get out of it. I need to get out of it. It's been a long time. It's been a good car, though. You got wins on it, now you have a championship on it. Yeah, it's first time for everything, right? Been racing for almost 10 years now, and this is my first championship, I guess, so pretty crazy. Who do you want to thank? Um, everybody that behind that wall. My dad, my uh, my wife, and my pit crew chief, Eric, and everybody else in this car. It's been a long journey, and I appreciate all the work they put in over there. For it. Congratulations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our champion, Ryan Serrazzi! <laughs> All right, y'all. 2024 Super Stock Track Champion. Feels pretty good. Uh, let me just recap the night. I got the car. Uh, unloaded already out of the trailer. Uh, the night started with me getting a visit from my buddy Rich Combs of Combs Electrical. Rich gave me some more sponsorship money. Uh, this is the second time he's done this now and he's the only person ever that watched my video and said, hey, I'm gonna give this kid some money while I see him at the track. I just can't believe it. So Rich, thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. Um, it definitely, you know, it helps with the fuel bill and, and everything that goes along with racing. So I appreciate it. The car, as you guys saw, wasn't very good. Um, man, that track was just so slimy and so greasy to start out. Just the, the craziest track I've ever taken a green on. Um, but it actually did come around quite a bit in the race. Uh, towards the end of the race, I ran the fastest lap ever again um, at that track at 15.5. So it did come around quite a bit, but it was kind of just like you had to run on the bottom because that was the only place that there was grip at the track. And uh, you guys saw me go high in uh, three and four trying to race for the win on the first lap, obviously. <laughs> but I wasn't going to just back up and, and follow that guy. I don't know. I probably should have. But the racer in me said, all right, he's on the bottom. I'm on the top. We're coming down the back stretch. I'm going high. And I went high and I almost freaking spun out and collected the whole field. But luckily, I didn't see one dent on the car at all from the race. And it, di it didn't look like anybody who was in that wreck uh, got too tore up where they couldn't finish the race. Um, so, I mean, bonehead move on my part, but I mean, I don't really know if there's too much else I could have done because that up high was just so slimy and greasy. Um, it was just crazy, but the car wasn't too good. The, the changes I made on the setup plates, the week prior, I went in the wrong direction. Um, I moved the rear end this way a little bit and also this way up and both those, I think hurt the car. Um, and so the, the car was definitely better. The previous time out at Antioch um, with a little bit more side bite. Um, but, you know, I just was spinning tires. I got I had I couldn't get a, a hold of anything uh, out there at all. And, you know, I'm down three inches a tire um, compared to what the other guys around with the 11 inch tires. This is my dirt. Who's your dirt boss? That means our tires are out to here, you know. Um, so when I say that I put my dry tires on, let me show you what I'm talking about here. These tires that we have back here have only been siped and buffed. There's no extra grooves in here. As you can see, there's a couple sipes and uh, they got all the rubber on them still. And on that track, with it being that greasy and slimy, um, I needed my wet tires. Let me show my wet tires. All right, these are the Jason Poppert special wet tires. See how much this, uh, these things have been grooved? I mean, they've been grooved vertically, horizontally, diagonally. Uh, these things bite pretty good in the wet. That's my left rear. So anyways, not having those tires on did hurt pretty good, but I'm not going to say uh, that it was the wrong move. Uh, I do believe that if we would have been the third main event like they said we are going to be, um, I do think that the track would have been starting to go dry at that point. But the fact that they just made up their mind and said, all right, you guys aren't going to go third now while we're in staging. They said, you're guys going to go first now. Uh, it just threw a huge monkey bone into everything. Um, monkey bone, monkey wrench, what the hell am I talking about? Anyway, <laughs> uh, going back to the track championship, 
Uh, this is the third time I've ever tried to race for a championship. Uh, I did once in 2018 at Antioch Speedway also. Ran 18 full races there, and then also one other time in 2016 at Petaluma Speedway. Uh, I think there's like 12 races that year. Both those years, I made all the races, and I still finished fourth, both times. Um, and it was tough, especially, I remember 2018 at Antioch, that was a rough year. It almost made me not want to race at all the next year after that, because all I had time for in between races was like maintenance and damage repairs. I didn't have any time to make the car faster. It just was like, fix the car to get back on the track and collect points. And it just was not fun. And I was not competitive back then. Um, the car was at that point, like 400 pounds overweight. It didn't have nearly as good a motor as I have in it now. Um, and it wasn't as setup wise compatible or competitive wise. Um, I just didn't have a great setup on it back then. And so down on power, uh, overweight, I was just, I, w I was like a third place car at best at any given night. And so that was a tough year. And the fact that it's just kind of like, this year was just like a fun year. I was like, okay, there's four races on the schedule. I'm going to try to make all four of them just to support my local track. And hopefully they don't get rid of our class turning into four top threes, a win, multiple heat rate or yeah, multiple heat race wins. And now a track championship. It's just been a great year. And I think luck's been on my side for the first time in a long time. Um, but I also think it is a lot of the hard work that's paying off. You know, that the fact that I can build a car that actually is reliable now, it doesn't break down. You know, I don't, I'm not breaking motors, I'm not breaking drive lines, gears. I'm not popping tires. Um, it just, I got a solid car now and I'm really proud of the fact that it actually made all the laps this year, even though it was only four races. Um, that's more than some guys can say. So, uh, I'm really proud of that feat at least, you know? All right. So obviously if I made a new track record for myself at a 15.5, I was going pretty good at one point in the race. And there was, uh, a couple times towards the end of the race when, uh, I felt like I was getting the hang of it and the guys in first and second weren't really pulling away. I was able to keep up with them a little bit. And I was able to get this guy hooked up enough, you know, towards the end of the night. And when I was doing that, my, uh, my buddy, Sean McCoy, who was behind me, he was in the blue number 60 car. He said that he was looking at my exhaust pipes here and the stacks were blowing out a blue flame, like a, a little bit of blue flame on the gas, just constantly. And then, you know, all you guys see the big old flames when they pop out when I'm off the gas, getting in the corner and I'm on the brakes. But the fact that there's a blue flame right there while the car is going down the track, that's just so cool to me. Uh, you know, I love racing and being the driver of the car, but to me, what it's all about and why I always have loved racing as a kid and even now, it's about the damn cars. I just love, you know, how they look, how they sound, um, the flames. Uh, the big motors is what makes it for me. That's why I'm in this class. I hate the crate racing classes. They just sound like crap. Um, but these big motors, even though this is not a big motor, it's got a nasty cam in it. It's just a great motor. This thing is a 357 cubic inch small displacement kind of motor that I built. Uh, 10 and a half one compression ratio on pump gas. And it's blowing out freaking, or it's constantly blowing out a blue flame. That's just badass. I don't care that I'm not super high on the cubic inches and not super high on the compression ratio and not running on alcohol like all the rest of the cars. Uh, the fact that it's able to do that, that's cool in my mind. I could win all the races in the world, but that right there makes it for me personally. As you can see, I'm missing some stickers. I've already begun uh, taking all the decals off because now that it's the off season for this car, I gotta sell it. I've had it posted for a long time. You guys have seen the for sale sign on it now for multiple years. And uh, I gotta post it on Facebook. I gotta post it on Craigslist. I gotta post it on all these different racing sites and nobody is interested in buying this car. Um, and I'm trying to sell for $10,000 and that's with everything I got for the car. I got spare freaking tires galore. I got spare rims. I got spare radiators, spare freaking pull bars. I got spare parts galore for this thing. And I'm just trying to get rid of all of it. And you can't even buy a new competitive motor for $10,000 for these things. So I don't know. I just can't take it with me to where I'm moving to. So it's got to go. And if I had to pull it apart piece by piece and sell it off one by one, I will, which would suck, but I will. I just want to keep the car around the area and keep the car counts up in the area. Um, but it's got to go. So if you guys know anyone wants to buy it, let me know. Um, but this will be probably the last video I see with the super stock, uh, at least for racing related, um, stuff. Um, but yeah, wrapping up the season, the race, and probably the super truck. So 
Thank you guys for watching as always. Let me know in the comments what you love about this thing the most. Um, and we're actually racing this next weekend here at Antioch Speedway, November 2nd. They have the Hobby Stock Nationals end of the year race. There should be like 50 Hobby Stocks. So that'll be fun. Eric will be driving. Um, but yeah, you guys remember, if it's bent, it ain't broken. One more thing. The mullet... I didn't cut it all year because it's been good luck, but the mullet feature wins track championship. Haven't had any of those without a mullet, so you got to keep it.